Let's give that to the Lord. I praise him. I worship him right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad to be in Corbin tonight. How about you? Amen. Man, good place to be around God's people. And what a great service to be a part of. You may be seated. Amen. Appreciate the opportunity to come and and be a part of his service tonight, this celebration. I give honor to all the pastors from this section that are here, all the ministry that are gathered tonight. God bless you and your family, amen, and your churches, amen. May God will pour out his blessings. Give honor to brother and sister Vitito tonight. What great people they are, and uh, I always honor him, respect them, amen. And he has a way of putting a just a unique touch upon a special service. Amen. I would suggest any pastor that has an anniversary service, invite him to come and say a few words. Amen. Amen. He did that for us uh, several years ago in Russellville. And they came and, and, and was a part of the service. And he received that offering. And it was just a, a nice touch, amen, to the service. And I appreciate them what they've stood for, what they stand for now, and great people. Amen. Give them another good hand clap. I love the bitter toast. Amen. And, of course, it's always good to be in Section D with Brother Fox. Amen. Sister Fox tonight, just a great leader, and we appreciate him. We're giving the hand claps. Let's give the Foxes a good hand clap. Appreciate them. Amen. And I, I want to say I commend this church for setting aside a weekend to celebrate uh, 15 years of pastoralship from Brother and Sister Thomas. Amen. You know, the Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. And you never go wrong honoring the man of God, his wife, and family. Amen. Pastor and Sister Thomas are great people. When I think of Brother Thomas, I... I think of a man that is ethical, he's fair, he's honest, uh, he's a man of integrity, amen. He's loyal, he's trustworthy, amen. He's a man of vision, been very involved in establishing churches in the area and surrounding areas, and I appreciate that, amen. I say this from my heart tonight, I'm glad to be able to call Brother and Sister Thomas our friends, and we love and appreciate them, amen. We go way back. Maybe we shouldn't talk about that. Amen. That that means time has went by. I met them when I first came to the Kentucky District. Amen. About 25 years ago, we preached for Brother and Sister Harris in the month of July of 19, um, wow, 19, everybody say 19. Amen. I believe it was 1990 that we preached for Brother Harris right before we went to Harrodsburg to begin to pastor there in 90, 1990 of, of July. Amen. And they have been faithful through the years, and we appreciate them. I read a, a statistics the other day that, now this is all denominations, all churches, all ministries, 50% of the ministers starting out will not last, will not last five years. One out of every 10 ministers will retire, actually retire from the ministry. In other words, there's not a percentage-wise in the, in the Christian world a man of ministers that actually continue to minister. And on an average, there are 4,000 new churches, a man that begin each year. And this is all denominations. But yet there are 7,000 churches that close their doors every year. And when I read statistics like that, I give honor to Brother and Sister Thomas tonight for 15 years of ministry in Corbin, Kentucky. Amen. I honor them. Amen. Amen. And the Bible said to take heed unto thyself, Paul was telling Timothy, and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself 
and them that hear thee. So preaching this gospel will save Brother Thomas, amen, and those that hear the word of the Lord, amen. Brother and Sister Thomas, I know we've honored with uh, a money tree and many hand claps tonight, but I would like for you to stand one more time, and I just want to make a statement, amen. Paul told the Hebrews, he said, fear, said, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Other words, amen. He is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Other words, God does not forget your work and your labor of love. Sometimes ministry is a lonely uh, occupation at different times. Amen. There's wonderful times, but yet there are times of emptiness and loneliness. But remember, God does not forget your work and labor of love. Amen. Which you have showed toward his name and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Amen. I think uh, one more uh, applause, standing ovation to honor Brother and Sister Thomas to be in order. Thank God for 15 years. You can just remain standing. If you want to go to 1 Timothy chapter number 3, and I'll begin with verse number 14. Amen. You're in for a treat tomorrow, hearing the preaching from Brother Vitito. And last night, I understand that Brother Peeler preached and did a great job and had great church. Amen. So I'm sandwiched right here in between greatness and greatness. Amen. So you pray God would help me to uh, speak something tonight to help us as a church. Amen. Paul here was writing to Timothy. And Paul had been released from prison, the Roman prison. And you would find it in the latter part of the book of Acts. Paul left prison and he went to Ephesus to address a church that was there. And at that church, they had seemed to be, had been led astray by false teaching. And Paul went there to Ephesus, amen, and began to iron out the problem and to address it, amen. At one point in time, he felt a need to go to Macedonia. And when he did that, he put the young man Timothy in charge of the church there at Ephesus, Paul knew that Timothy would face some challenging times, that he would face some obstacles in the ministry. So Paul begins to write this letter back to Timothy and to give him strength in overseeing the work at Ephesus. So I'm reading tonight in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 14. Paul said, These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. In other words, Paul wanted to come back and he wanted to visit Timothy again at Ephesus. And verse 15, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. He said, This is the house of God. It's the church of the living God. It's the pillar. It's the ground of truth. Amen. Amen. When I think of this house tonight, I was admiring the beauty in the spacious auditorium. But this is the house of God. This is where God dwells and moves in the midst of the church. This church is God's house. Amen. He lives here. He provides for his house tonight. Amen. We honor him here. And you know what? He rules in this house tonight. Amen. I want to preach for the next just a little while. Amen. About the triumphant church. The triumphant church. What does it mean to be triumphant? It means to be victorious. It means to have won a battle. Amen. To be an overcomer. 
Amen. Why don't we pray and ask God to bless this portion of the service tonight? Would you pray? God, we ask you to bless this portion of the service tonight. The preaching of your word. The anointing of the Holy Ghost tonight, I pray. I believe for that right now. Bless the man of God and his family. And bless this congregation, we pray. Thank you for the leadership of this church. Anoint them and bless them and keep them, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say in Jesus' name. One more time, would you put your hands together to the Lord right now. can be seated. Thank you for standing. Amen. Again, it's an honor to be a part of this service tonight. Amen. I brought a couple, uh, three, three slides, three pictures. The first is Joseph Smith. Amen. He was born December 23rd, 1805. Amen. He deceased June the 27th. 1844. I'm going to start out a little slow, lay a little foundation tonight. Amen. That doesn't mean I'm going to preach for an hour. Everybody said amen. I'll be less than an hour. I promise you tonight. I have a longer drive than what you have. Amen. But I'm going to preach what the Lord gave me tonight. Is that all right? Amen. So Joseph Smith, as a young man in 1820, amen, Joseph Smith wanted to know what church was the true church. So the story goes that he searched his Bible and he asked God what he should do and he felt impressed to go out in the midst of a wooded area and there he began to pray. And the story goes that there was a light that shined down out of heaven and this is around 1820 and and the heavenly father and Jesus Christ began to speak to him. And Joseph Smith asked this voice, amen, that what church? And the voice began to speak out and said not to be a part of any of the churches because they are incorrect in their doctrines. And so Joseph Smith began to proclaim that the Lord had chose him to be a prophet and had chose him to restore the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. It was a few years later in 1830, amen, that this individual, Joseph Smith, he founded the church of the Latter-day Saint movement. Amen. The Mormons. He was 24 years old when he published the Book of Mormon. By the time of his death, some 14 years later, he had attracted tens of thousands of followers to follow his doctrine, to follow his teaching. Joseph had a date of birth. Joseph had a man, a time that he died in 1844. The next slide that I brought tonight is Sun Mun Moon, amen. He was born February the 25th, 20, February the 25th, 1920. He died September the 3rd, 2012. This particular Korean religious leader was a founder of the Unification Church, amen. The church that was known for his blessings are even thousands of, of weddings would take place, one ceremony, thousands become married. And, and he was the one that propagated the gospel for this Unification Church. He had a date of birth. He had a date that he deceased. My third slide tonight, a man is Ronald Hubbard. He was born March the 13th, 1911. Amen. He died January the 24th, 1980.
86. He was an author, a man. He was a founder of the Church of Scientology, a man, a movement that began in 1953 in New Jersey. Amen. But this founder of that movement, he had a date of birth. And then he had a date that he died. Amen. He was deceased. I'm, I'm speaking tonight and preaching about the triumphant church. Amen. And when I think of the church tonight, and I think of our God, amen, we have to have faith. And everybody say faith. Amen. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Amen. Our God tonight has no beginning. He has no ending. Amen. He always was. God did not come into existence. Amen. He has always been in existence. It takes faith to comprehend that. And to believe that, amen. I hear the psalmist writing in Psalm chapter 90 and verse number two, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God, amen. I'm glad I know him tonight. Amen. And our God, and we know these scriptures well, but 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 16, our God, amen, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, uh, preached unto the Gentiles, uh, believed on in the world, uh, received up into glory. That's our God. Our God created himself a body and walked among mankind. We uh, believe that. We have faith in that. Our God, amen, in that body. A man was born there in Bethlehem, a date of birth. He died at Calvary some 33 years later. A man but different from Joseph Smith and Sun Moon and Ronald Hubbard. Amen. Our God is not dead, but he is alive. I like that old song. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him in my heart. I can feel him all over me. And let me tell you something right now. I feel God in the house tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost in the house tonight. I feel his spirit in this place. Oh, go ahead and shout a little bit. I feel shout in the house right now. He, he may, you may be seated uh, and the church that I'm a part of tonight uh, the church that you're a part of tonight uh, it's built uh, by the hand of the Lord uh, it's not built by Scott Marshall uh, it's not built by uh, Craig Thomas uh, it's not built by Brother Watson I don't know your first name uh, but Brother Watson uh, but this church is built uh, by the hand of the Lord between Peter and Jesus in his earthly ministry. He said, I will build my church. I will build my church. Let me just say this before I go on preaching tonight. I'm not worried about this church. Amen. The world may be going down. Morals may be going down. Society's going another direction. But the church that I'm a part of tonight is going to move up a little bit higher. I'm preaching about the church. Triumphant. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I will 
will build my church. This triumphant church was in that conversation when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi that he looked at his disciples. They had followed him. And he began to question them. He said, whom do men say that I am? I mean, what is the talk that's going on out there? What are they saying about me? And the disciples said, oh, some say that thou art uh, uh, Elias, thou art Elijah, or thou art Jeremiah, Jeremiah, amen, or thou art one of the prophets, uh, or some say that thou art John the Baptist. But Jesus looked at his disciples uh, and he said, but whom do you say that I am? I want to know who you think I am. I want to know if you have a revelation or not. I want to know if you have a personal relationship or not. And Peter said, oh Lord. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter got a revelation of who he was. Aren't you glad tonight you got a revelation of who Jesus is? I'm not worshiping three, but I'm worshiping one. And his name is Jesus. Amen. His name is Jesus. I'm preaching about the church, the church triumphant. And then Jesus made this statement. Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 18. I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Amen, Peter. In the Greek means Petros, a small stone. Peter, you represent a small stone. But upon this rock, I will build my church. Amen. In the Greek, that word upon this rock, that phrase means Petrus, P-E-T-R-A-S, which means a gigantic boulder or a foundation stone. Peter, I'm not building this church upon you, but I'm building this church upon the revelation that you know who I am. I'm glad tonight I'm part of the church triumphant. I don't mind telling you, I feel a shout coming on. I feel a rejoicing coming on. I'm in the right place. I'm in the church triumphant. If I was a singer like Brother Thomas, what a great job leading us in worship. What a great singer. I'm not a singer. I realize I got a personal <laughs> revelation a number of years ago. I leave the music playing to my wife. I leave the singing to my wife and daughters. Amen. But I do the preaching and they do the singing. But if I was a singer, I'd sing. I'm talking about the church in that book a revelation. It's built on the rock. It's got a firm foundation. I'm telling you the church that you're a part of tonight. It's built by the hand of the Lord. It's a firm foundation. It's not going anywhere. Amen. I was talking to a pastor just uh, yesterday on the phone, amen, and he said he's working with a couple <laughs> situations in his church, and one of the families said, oh, you really don't believe all those standards that you preach and teach. It's just because you're part of that organization. He said, no, let me tell you something. Amen, I believe exactly what I'm preaching because this church is built upon a firm foundation. I'm preaching the word of the Lord. Ephesians yes. yes. chapter two, verse number 19. Now therefore, you're no more strangers, a man of foreigners. You're no more strangers nor foreigners. A man, but uh, the fellow citizens with the saints, uh, with the saints and the household of God. 
That's what we are a part of tonight. And in verse number 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. We have to have that understanding tonight. He is a chief cornerstone. This church is built upon a firm foundation. Amen. And Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let the anthem ring out. The songs of victory swell. For the church triumphant is alive and well. Oh, give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. It's a firm foundation. It's not on a shifting foundation. It's not built upon a foundation that's cracking. But it's a firm foundation. Amen. It's been through the storm. Amen. It's been through the storm. But the wind couldn't turn it. Amen. That lake of Galilee was some 13 miles in length. At different points throughout this lake, it was eight miles wide. But this particular night, they were on that boat and they were in the midst of the Lake of Galilee. They were at that section. There was about five miles, is the width, five miles. And the storm came in, Brother Thomas, and the wind began to blow and the waves began to cause the ship to, to rock back and forth and they were afraid. Amen. They were on that boat because Jesus told them to get on that boat. They were in the midst of the storm. Some people end up up in storms because of disobedience in their life. Jonah ended up in a storm because of disobedience. But this time, the disciples, they were on that boat because Jesus told them to get on the boat. They were all they were sailing to the other side because Jesus told them to sail to the other side. Amen. They were in total obedience to the word of the Lord. Amen. Even though they were in obedience to the word of the Lord, a storm came their direction. Let me tell you something tonight. You could be in the perfect will of God and be fasting and praying and worshiping God and being faithful. But sometimes there's still storms that's gonna come your way even though you're doing everything you know to do and you're doing it right. But don't get discouraged. Don't get perplexed. Don't jump overboard. But Jesus said, peace be still. And the wind died down. And the waves began to cease. Amen. I'm telling you, you're going to go through storms in your life, but the wind couldn't turn it. It's not going to change it. I feel like I'm preaching to somebody tonight. You're in a storm. You're in a midnight hour. And you don't know what's going on. I'm doing everything God's telling me to do. Why am I in this storm? Stick with the boat. Stick with the church. Stick with the man of God. I'm telling you, the wind cannot turn the ship. The local church is going to go through some storms. Amen. Praise God. If I said praise God. Praise God. Amen. This church has been here, I believe, since 1980. I don't know all the history about the church, and I don't want to know all the history about the church. I don't even want to know all the history about the church that I pastor. Amen. Amen. There's good and bad from down through the years. I could talk to Brother Vinter, tell he could tell me stories about that. He knows more about the church I pastor than what I know about the church I pastor. Now I really got you confused, don't I? Well, I'll tell you why I'm saying that, amen. He knows more about what happened years ago than what I know knew what happened years ago. Amen. He don't know anything going on now. I don't even want to know what's going on now. Praise God. Amen. But he knew Brother Baskerville who pastored there for 20 years from 1960 to 1980. Brother Vinito was very instrumental and a part of that church through those years and in numerous services with them. Amen. I'm telling you, the church in Russellville, it's been through some storms. Amen. But the church is still there because the wind cannot turn the church. I don't know a lot about this church. I called Brother Adams on the way over here. Didn't get to talk to him. He called 
called me back, left me a message. Gerald Adams, if I'm correct, amen, from he told me 1980, amen, he started the church in Corbin. I hope that's correct. That's what I was told tonight, amen. Somewhere correct me when church is over if I'm wrong. But whatever, the church has been here for 30 plus years. It's had numerous pastors down through the years. I'm telling you, the church has been through the storm. Amen, but you gotta remember tonight, this church is not like another church down the road or around the block, but this church is built on a firm foundation. And you know why we're celebrating 15 years tonight? Because the church is still here. Because this church is a triumphant church. It's a victorious church. Hey, friend, the church has never done me wrong. Amen, I've been hurt. I've been offended by people. But when it comes to the church, it's a church triumphant. Amen. What would you say, Brother Marshall? What would you say, Superintendent Marshall? I'm telling you, stick with the church. Stick with the church. Stick with the church. Why? Because it's a triumphant church. Amen. It's been through the fire. It's been through the fire. But the fire couldn't burn it. You know why? Because it's a triumphant church. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar heated that furnace seven times hotter. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were cast in the midst of the fiery furnace. Their, their bondage fell off, amen. And long behold, when they looked inside there, amen, there was a fourth in the fire with them, amen, and delivered them from the fiery furnace. Why? Why were they cast into the fiery furnace? Because they would not bow down. They would not worship the golden image. They would not change what they believed. They stayed on the firm foundation. We're going to worship Jehovah. And that's the only one we're going to worship. I know we're living in changing times. I know we do some, we do things different in our church than we did a number, number of years ago. Whoever would have dreamed of the Thomas? We have multimedia in our church. Churches and be able to show words and video clips and things. We do it in Russellville. That's part of change that takes place. And there's nothing wrong with changes such as that in our churches. But when it comes to what this church is built upon, it's a firm foundation. I'm not going to change my worship. I'm not going to change what I believe. This church is a victorious church. It's a triumphant church. Oh, I feel so good right now. I can preach all night long. But I'm not going to do that I'm telling you you got to realize you're in the church try it it was fed to the lions it was fed to the lions but the lions couldn't eat it you know why man Daniel stayed the course. When they were told not for 30 days to worship and not for 30 days to pray to any other individual. Daniel three times a day went to his room and cranked open the window and prayed a prayer toward Jerusalem three times a day. He stayed the course. Everybody say he stayed the course. He stayed the course. Amen. In a world... Amen. That are so confused with religion and theology. Amen. And the, the ministers, and I'm not being judgment or critical, but that's what we face. Amen. That we, we, we face a challenge of many ministries and, and the blending of ministries in the world uh, and the doctrines that are changing. Uh, in fact, a mega church in, in Houston, Texas. Uh, amen. Joe Osteen. Some may have heard of him. I've read a book or two of his. Amen. Uh, but a, a, a minister, a preacher, of a non-denominational movement. And this particular man pastor some 43,500 in a congregation. His wife stood up. I actually found the video clip and watched it a few days, a few weeks ago. Amen. And she said, preaching to that congregation, this is what his wife said, I 
just want to encourage every one of us to realize when we obey God, amen, we're doing it for ourselves because God takes pleasure when we're happy, amen. She went on and say, just, you're, just do good for your own self. Do good because God wants you to be happy. And when you come to church, when you worship him, you're not doing it for God, really. You're doing it for yourself. You talk about some... Uh, What's that mean? I don't know. I've heard it before. Amen. I was raised on a farm. Hogwash. Amen. That sounds pretty good right now, right? Amen. What 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 Victoria Osteen said was hogwash. Amen. They were so they were so against the word of God, saying that God just wants us to be happy. We worship Him because that makes us happy, and and God's happy when we're happy. Well, I can understand God's happy when we're happy, but I'm here worshiping God tonight not to make me happy. I walked through those doors. I clapped my hands. I lifted my voice. I raised my hands to make Him happy. To be glory to him and to bring honor to him hey amen I'm telling you our world's messed up when it comes to theology and things that they believe but thank God for a man that'll stay the course come on Paul told Timothy preach the word you gotta say pastor preach the word pastor preach the word why do you need to preach your word? For the time will come uh, when they will not endure sound doctrine. Uh, amen. I take a moment tonight. Uh, amen. I may take my liberty a little bit too much. Uh, but by the car, preach the word. Uh, amen. Brother Holiday, preach the word. Uh, amen. Brother Davidson, preach the word. Uh, amen. Brother Reese, preach the word. Uh, amen. You ministers, preach the word. Uh, pastors, preach the word. Uh, we're not building our church to be like the world. We're building our church to get ready to go to heaven. It's a church triumphant. Paul told Timothy that this church is a pillar and the ground of truth. I don't mind telling you, I'm glad I'm in church. I'm in the church tonight. This church is Victoria's church. Oh, I feel the Lord here right now. Would you lift your hands and love the Lord together? Why don't you praise him for the church right now? I feel a wave of the Holy Ghost sweeping through this house tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. It's in this church that people's lives are turned around. It's in this church uh, that people can be healed in their bodies. Uh, it's in this church that prayers will be answered. Uh, it's in this church that we pray and worship God uh, and victory's given. Uh, I'm a part of the triumphant church tonight. Uh, I'm glad to be part of that church. Yes. 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 Everybody said, oh, yes. This church has fought a many wars, but never defeated. Now, I, I'm in section D. I don't know the political temperature of this section. If you're a Democrat or a Republican. Boy, it got quiet, didn't it? Tell you what I am. Or maybe it independent. I don't know. <laughs> but that's all I'm going to say about it. I got your attention now. <laughs> but several weeks ago, I read the headline of the newspaper, or one of the headlines of the newspaper. And Kentucky's Senator Rand Paul was at a <clears throat> political event in New Hampshire. In fact, Manchester, New Hampshire. I didn't, actually did not read the whole article. I just read the headline. And he was saying to that group that was gathered there at that fundraiser, he said, 
He said, I smell victory. And when I read those words, something got a hold of me. Not from the political realm, but from a spiritual realm. And I thought about this church that I'm a part of tonight. I smell victory. And then my mind raced. Amen. With David and all his men, the, the army of Israel was gathered around. And they were being attacked by the Philistines. And they were down there in that valley of Rephraim. Amen. And the Bible said, the Lord said to David, David, you go up behind them and come around from another direction. And David, let me tell you when you're supposed to do that. Don't attack them from the front, but go at a different angle into the camp and fight the Philistines. And David, when thou hearest the sound of going on in the tops of the mulberry trees, when you hear that rustling going on, amen, one commentary said it was as angels that were marching to the tops of the trees. And David, when you hear the sound that's going on in the top of the mulberry trees, go out to battle because I'm going to give you the victory because I'm going to give you deliverance that day. I'm telling you, I smell victory. I hear victory for the church. Hear me tonight. I hear Sister Fox requesting prayer for her family to be saved and finding a church somewhere to go to. I'm telling you, I hear the sound of victory. I smell victory in the house tonight. I'm almost through preaching, but I want you to know, amen, the devil cannot defeat you. He cannot take you down. Amen, the gates of hell should not prevail against this church. We're going to have revival. We're going to see people baptized in Jesus' name because I hear the sound of victory. But the holiday told me that I was shaking hands. I said, how's it going? He said, oh, he said, Monday. We're going to baptize four on Monday. I'm telling you, a work for the Lord is going on there. I'm telling you, pastor, minister, saints of God, keep on clapping your hands. Keep on coming to church. Keep on putting faith in God. I hear the sound of victory. If you feel a little bit of what I've been preaching about tonight, why don't you stand to your feet right now and throw your hands in the air and begin to love the Lord for the church triumphant. Amen for the triumphant church that we're a part of tonight. When the devil tells you you don't need to go to that church, you say, devil, you're a liar. That's a triumphant church. Tis the old ship of Zion. It's the hope for the lost and dying. It's a soul saving station. It's the tower of salvation. Let me tell you something. This church will take you to heaven. I'm not talking about the building or the block work or the walls or the furniture or anything. I'm talking about God's church. You know what I'm talking about tonight. God's church. It'll take you to heaven. The man's 85 years old and I'm through. He's 85 years old. Everybody say, that's young. Whatever you want to sing is fine. He has cancer, terminal cancer. He's part of a church. Been in part of a church for 20 years. Visit him the other day in the hospital. He said, Brother Marsh, he said, every time I come to church, he said, I make sure I lift both my hands. He always does. I watch him just like this. Because I read somewhere in the Bible, it says to lift holy hands. And Brother George, every time he comes, he lifts his hands and begin to worship the Lord. Amen. I want to tell you something. There'll come a point in your life, at the end of your life, you'll be glad that you've been a part of the triumphant church. And George said, it doesn't matter how it works out. 
He said everything is going to be all right. You know why? Because this church preaches the name of Jesus. It preaches repentance. It preaches baptism in Jesus' name. It preaches the Holy Ghost. It preaches separation from the world. It preaches living for God. I'm glad I'm part of this church tonight. One more time, give the Lord a hand clap. God bless you, Brother Thomas. Oh, give that hand clap to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the old church of Zion. It's hope for the lost and the dying. 